Hey pals, welcome back to a new video. Today, I wanted to talk to you about a really fundamental question, and that is how to get started in game development. Uh, this is something that a lot of people ask me in my YouTube comments and on my stream, and it's not that difficult to answer actually. Um, but it's really hard, I understand, for those of you getting started, because I went through it, um, to sift through all of the complexities, all the different terminology and the engines and the languages, and uh, to get over that first hurdle of just getting started. So I want to sort of demystify things in this episode and kind of give you a bit of a story of how I started uh, and show you kind of like a way that you can get started that doesn't feel quite as scary uh, on your path towards making like real games. That's something that uh, even myself, uh, I struggled with for a long time of how do I actually start making real games and, and what do I need to learn to do that? Do I need a degree? Uh, do I need to learn a specific language? How does this all work? I know this is a question that is on a lot of your minds, and so I won't waste your time. Let's get started. Okay, so the first question is, what is a game engine? So the Wikipedia definition is, it's a software framework primarily designed for the development of video games and generally includes relevant libraries and support programs. Okay, this is kind of vague. Uh, so let's uh, first ask the question, what does this mean? It's really any set of tools and libraries that build distribution ready game applications, right? That's what that means. Um, but you're probably asking, what does this really mean? Let's, let's break it right down. You're writing some text files, you're putting some assets and stuff into an editor sometimes, and then you press play and the game runs, and then you can press build, and then you can upload it to the internet. So if you're trying to make a game in 2022 and beyond, uh, this landscape is kind of representative of where things are at. Uh, there is not an exhaustive list here, there's tons of other places and ways you can make games and some of them involve code and some of them don't. Uh, and I've had a little bit of experience with all of these things at some point. What I might say may be outdated, okay, by the time you're watching this or even now. Uh, just as like a super general overview, you will on your learning game dev journey come across a few things. You might come across environments for making mobile apps. You can make games with these. Um, but I wouldn't advise getting started with game development here, mostly because there's not a lot of help in doing graphics in these. Then you have more like frameworks, uh, which are kind of like the, the first category, but not platform specific. So you have Love, um, which uses Lua, and you have Hacks, which uses like all kinds of different languages. And what these are, are what I would say are closer to like libraries. This is a bunch of code that you start with that you can refer to when making games. They also do building games as well. As far as the process of designing and editing goes, these kind of leave you on your own. And uh, they're also very DIY when it comes to exporting. So as far as they can be called engines, these are probably the lightest version of what an engine is. Uh, they give you a lot of code that gets you started, but you need to figure out a lot of it yourself. Then we have the engines for making uh, real big kid games, TM. So when we talk about game engines, this is kind of what most people talk about most of the time. Uh, these are Game Maker, Godot, Unity, and Unreal. There are other engines. This is not an exhaustive list, but this is kind of like the bigger four for independent developers or small studios. Most big studios, you know, your Ubisofts, your EA, your Activision, Blizzard, they will have their own engines in-house and custom tooling. Uh, but for people who want an off-the-shelf solution, these are kind of the big ones. And, and these two, Unity and Unreal, you would have heard um, if you're watching my channel. The way I would characterize these are Unity and Unreal are kind of the most large scale for distribution, you know, games on, on consoles like uh, the Switch and on the PlayStation and Xbox uh, and Steam, you will see coming out of these engines. And then less so, but still possible, for Game Maker and Godot. It's not about, you know, this is for making better games than this, or uh, your games will run faster if you use Unreal. It's nothing like that. Although, when it comes to graphics capability specifically, Unreal kind of does have the monopoly on like photorealistic lighting and performance. But if you're watching this video, none of this has any bearing on you. All you really wanna know is wh where do I start? And what are the choices that I make that don't restrict me moving forward, right? I don't want to pick the wrong language. That's, that's where you're at. So what you'll see across these language-wise is 
something that looks kind of like this, right? Most modern programming languages that are used for making games use something that's based on a language called C. C style languages are not architecturally necessarily the same. So people who are really picky about this stuff and programmers can be like this, they will say C Sharp and C++ are very different. Uh, they're, they're, they're nothing like each other. They might look superficially like each other, or they might, they might say Java and JavaScript. They're nothing like each other, even if they look a little bit like each other. For the purposes of learning code, Java, JavaScript, C++, C Sharp, the first year of you learning programming, these things may as well be, uh, you know, a month's worth of learning away from learning one or the other, right? That entry level foundational stuff. If you're learning code, if you want to go down that path and you don't want to do just visual scripting or blueprinting, learning any of them will be fine. But I will say C++ tends to be a language that's a little more hardcore. So C++ applications have more uh, constraints. They require a little bit more rigor on behalf of the programmer to do things like memory management. And so they can be much more performant, but they can also be really, really difficult to work with. So you wanna work with something that's a bit more high level, a bit more gentle on you. And C Sharp is not a bad place to start there. C Sharp is, I think, probably the safest place for you to learn if you wanna jump straight into an engine. So for all of the engines in the far right category, building a game kind of looks like this. You have a code editor and you have a level or scene editor. In traditional software development, you have what's called an integrated development environment, an IDE. And that's the thing that takes all the code and turns it into an application. For those engines, um, that is kind of not quite replaced by, but a lot of that work is done via the level or scene editor. So previewing games, building games, you do it from here rather than from the text editor. For application development, like Android and iOS, you would do that inside of your text editor, and that would be the entire thing. But for game design and game development, you see the actual applications like Unity, Unreal. Those are software applications that you open up on your computer, and those do the building for the most part. Game development basically involves opening up one of these applications, putting some assets in a scene, linking up some scripts to that scene, opening those scripts in a text editor, writing some code, pressing play, and previewing a game. That's it, that's the whole process, right? There is always some stuff to install at the beginning, you know, uh, frameworks and uh, packages for, uh, you know, getting started, development environments, blah, blah, blah. That stuff, you know, you may take an afternoon getting set up with. Um, if you download Unity from the Unity website, a lot of that stuff will come with it, right? It will install those when it's installing the Unity application and the same with Unreal. You're not really gonna be going hunting uh, across the internet trying to find the right development environment and the right packages to actually get started. Now I acknowledge that while getting started and actually installing Unity might be simple enough, if you were just dropped into this with no experience of programming whatsoever, this will still intimidate you, right? The Unity editor and the Unreal editor are incredibly complicated, right? There's tons of menus and different panels and uh, it's a lot. And you're probably also intimidated by this side too, right? You've got a blank screen. You're expected to write a bunch of stuff. What's a class? What's a function? What's a variable? It's a lot just in this space, not to mention all the libraries of code you need to learn and understand as well and get familiar with. So as, as easy as I can make this sound, there is a kind of more preliminary step where you just want to get familiar with how to make stuff happen with code. Right, like I write some text and I see something cool happen on the screen. So while the more ambitious among you or those of you with some experience in programming might be okay with jumping straight into Unity, learning the tutorials through the Unity learning uh, website, the rest of you will find this super intimidating and too much, right? It, you'll, you'll be stuck pretty quickly. So there is a step earlier than this that not many people recommend but that if you go through the university track for degrees that aren't computer science but that have any relationship to programming, you might find yourself being introduced to libraries or frameworks that just get you started in understanding programming and its relationship to real-time applications. And that's what I want to talk about next. These are two of the frameworks that I am most comfortable kind of introducing you to and promoting. Processing is not a game engine, but it is an application that you can use to make games. 
that uses real languages and is very, very simple to install. Processing is basically a library for Java as well as JavaScript and a few other languages that you can write some simple code in, press play and get something on the screen. Khan Academy is a website where you can learn things like computer science uh, and they also have a kind of course that is a web-based version of something very similar to processing. They have interactive lectures where they explain some of the fundamentals that you will learn if you go through the course for processing. So they're, they're kind of similar to each other. Processing is a little closer to Java. If you want to sort of graduate towards Unity, it's not a bad place to start. Whereas Khan Academy is more light, it's more uh, gentle, and it uses JavaScript, which is more web-based. Um, and you might have to learn a little bit more before going from JavaScript to a big boy game engine. So I actually recommend processing more here if you're prepared to get your hands a little bit dirty. So how did I learn? Um, when I was in high school, I took a, an IT class and a software design class in my senior years. And there we learned basic and visual basic. Basic is a really old programming language that you can use to make stuff. Um, but it's not very popular anymore. Then there is ActionScript all through the 2000s, right up until about 2010, 2011. Most games made by small teams were flash games and you would play them online and they were written in this scripting language called ActionScript through a program called Flash. So Adobe bought that off of a company called Macromedia. It used to be called Macromedia Flash, and then it was Adobe Flash. And I learned a bit of ActionScript when I was making characters for this online game called World, with W-H-I-R-L-E-D. Something like Habbo Hotel, if you know what that is, or um, kind of Club Penguin. They had a user-generated content kind of model where you could make your own characters and upload them up to a store, and people who liked them could buy them. And I used to make characters for that and make a little bit of money doing that. Um, so I learned a little bit of action script, but then I went to university and I learned Java. I took an intro to programming course and I was also through my design degree learning processing, which also used Java. So I learned Java in two separate subjects. Taking that knowledge, when I wanted to learn a bit more about Unity, I pivoted over to C Sharp. C Sharp happens to be almost identical to Java. C Sharp is kind of like what I would call Microsoft Java. It's Microsoft's attempt to take all of the syntax and write a version of Java that runs a bit better. And so that's how I learned, that's what I use today. I use C Sharp to write my games in Unity. So if you're learning games today, you don't have to do any of this. You can start pretty much here or even here if you're really ambitious. But I would say for those of you who you just wanna get started with programming, real-time programming, my platform of choice for learning that was processing. That's how I was introduced. I'm a little bit biased towards it, but it's a great place to find resources on game relevant concepts in a very, very, very low barrier for entry environment. So that's what I want to show you today. So what you do is go to processing.org. You download the application itself, which looks like this. Basically you can start typing straight away and press play and get game relevant code running straight away. Processing calls these sketches and that's what they kind of are. Right? They're really, really simple, easy ways to just write something and get an output. And then you can take that to Unity or whatever you want and kind of flesh it out there. And for me, most of the places that teach programming, when it comes to uh, learning Unity or going to a computer science degree at a university, what these miss when it comes to game development are the relevant code concepts that are actually used to make stuff happen in games. Right, so animating something with code, modeling motion using easing curves or calculus trigonometry, doing things like moving something along a sine wave, using noise to create procedural effects like terrain, understanding data structures and algorithms, things like uh, Voronoi triangulation or marching squares, all of these cool kind of digital procedural concepts that you wouldn't actually be introduced to if you just learn how to use the software. Um, these are things that you can actually grapple with quite quickly in something like processing. And there are lots of tutorials that actually teach you these things here. So Daniel Schiffman, is, uh, he's been around for a long time and he has tons of videos where he just explains these concepts. And so you can literally just come up in here and click one and, uh, and learn. There's also a ton of references and examples that you can check out if you're just wanting to click around and find something cool uh, that I think you know most of you will be inspired by. So flocking simulations is one of the things that I was seriously inspired by when I started learning this stuff. 
Uh, the concept of boids and flocking being a procedural thing is really, really cool. So here you have some emergent behavior coming from a simulation using nothing but some triangles moving around on the screen. This is kind of where the heart of like game relevant programming really lives. And I don't think that there's a place that has a lower barrier for entry to learn these things than processing. And even things like input callbacks. So just to show you how straightforward this can be, I've got a couple of functions here, a setup, a draw. This is getting you familiar with an update loop that you might find in something like Unity. Uh, and then some input mouse pressed. Let's define a simple variable, like could define a color, call it C. On mouse pressed, we can make C uh, a color with random values between zero and 256, red, green, and blue, any value somewhere in the random there. And then we can set the background every frame to uh, the color, okay? We get our output and every time we click, we get a different color, right? Some people might say this is uh, too simple, this is like too entry level, but I think if you were just getting started and you just want somewhere that you can learn comfortably, I think actually this is the right place to go. Uh, we could even do things like um, mouse position. So uh, mouse X, Y, Okay, can make that zero. Even things like spaces, grid space, pixel space. This is something that you'll do a lot of in game development. And so, you know, when the mouse is right at the bottom, that's the max mouse Y and we get green. Instead, if we go all the way to the top to zero, zero, and then go all the way across on the X axis, we get red. Okay, what happens when we have them both at max, we get something like yellow. Learning game development is not that far from this. The concepts of learning about data and logic at a very, very basic level, understanding variables, functions, classes, and then at a higher level, learning design and implementing that design inside of a bigger game engine. That's all things that you'll be doing down the line. So just to prove my point and a little bit of show and tell about this idea of learning game relevant concepts outside of a game engine in a low overhead environment where you can just focus on the ideas. Uh, I have this um, terrain generation algorithm that I've produced. Uh, it's based on the core underlying data structure of an oak tree. Um, you can see here, it's made up of cubes like something like Minecraft, but the cubes are actually different sizes and we have smaller cubes where we need more resolution uh, from the terrain. And I had this idea of, you know, mixing and matching a lot of these cube sizes to kind of create this more organic, almost like boulders and also grass and mountains mixing and matching in the same terrain space. And this idea that maybe you could subdivide the cubes to make even more fine shapes, you know, uh, you kind of almost sculpt shapes out of the terrain to make houses and stuff like that. I don't know, just some idea. And this idea of an oak tree is not something that is explicit or, or exclusive to Unity, right? You could do this in something like processing. And just to prove the point, I did a quick Google of processing oak tree and found this little script online. Someone was experimenting with it. I press run and straight away I get something that proves my point that demonstrates the data structure that somebody wrote and I can explore this thing here and see oh yeah here are the big cubes and smaller cubes and they get smaller and smaller you know as we go on and I can come in here and explore the way that they've built this and make changes and get this immediate feedback and I think for me as someone you know who was learning this stuff it was really helpful to have this resource right to have this way of playing with code that didn't require me to start up a new Unity project and create uh, scenes and gizmos and textures and meshes and blah, 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 blah. Here you can just say, okay, what's actually happening under the hood? What's the interesting, in this case, terrain generation, but otherwise game relevant concept that's being explored and how can I play with it for the purpose of interaction or whatever it is. That's just a little something uh, that I've been playing with. And uh, yeah, doing this is I think the most efficient way of, of getting more familiar with these ideas and they, they pop up all the time. I've gone on and on about it, you know what I mean. So if you have no experience with programming or game development and you wanna get started in the next year, this is the kind of approach that I would take. The first would be to learn some entry level programming through something like Processing or Khan Academy. I'm talking about variables, talking about classes, functions, that kind of stuff. Really, really entry level syntax stuff. Uh, then pivot towards game relevant concepts like I mentioned earlier. Again, you can learn those through processing.org or on YouTube. After that, pick a simple project to make in a game engine. So you're going to learn something like Unity by trying to build something from what you've learned in processing. 
but in Unity. So something very simple like tic-tac-toe or Pong or just a really simple game. Maybe something you've already built before in the uh, in the previous step. And then finally step four, which is also step five, six, seven, etc. You can start the next project increasing in scale and building on your existing code base. So at each step, spend something like 40 hours. That's like a couple of months if you spend an hour a day on weekdays or uh, you know one month if you're spending a couple of hours every single day. Game development is super complicated. It's a lifelong pursuit. If you're really passionate about it, you will get there. Uh, it just takes a lot of time. Of course, none of this refers to things like asset creation, animation, anything like that, uh, which is its own discipline. It's something that if you want to be a solo developer, you'll have to also learn parallel to all of this. But if you want to do it, I believe in you because I believe in me and I'm not that special. So if I can do it, so can you. Many of you have asked me if I would be interested in making a programming course or a Unity course. Uh, this is something that I don't have a lot of interest in doing, mostly because it's been done uh, by many practiced hands before me. There are tons of tutorials all across YouTube uh, and in places like Udemy that will teach you these things. And they don't really require a lot of anecdotal kind of like personal journey experience like what I have to kind of accompany that information. It's just learning the facts. And so, you know, maybe we could talk about some of these more interesting procedural concepts, things like Boyd's or Conway's Game of Life in my videos. I'd love to talk about that stuff. If you have any more questions, I would be happy to answer them in the comments below. And um, one last final little kind of information for you. For the next six months, I will be living in Thailand starting like next week. So the schedule for my uploads may be a little bit different um, to what it has been in the past. And that goes for my stream as well. I'll be making some announcements on my channel. So make sure to follow on Discord uh, as well as on Twitch. And uh, hopefully you can stay updated with what I'm doing. I'm gonna be focusing on my game Insignia and trying to get that to as close of a release date as possible. Specifically, I wanna start building a team, maybe even doing some sort of Kickstarter or a publisher signing. So my focus right now is to really get that game in the most chip shape position it's been in so far so that I can kind of pitch its final vision to uh, either you or a publisher for funding. So thanks everyone. Uh, have a happy new year and I will see you in the next one. Hey pal, thanks for watching. And thanks most especially to the patrons and Twitch subs who support this channel and my game dev project Insignia. To find out more, click the links in the description below. And uh, if you like this video, tell YouTube by clicking the like button and then YouTube will tell me and then I'll make more videos. That's nice. Thanks again. And uh, until next time.